to friends. I'm Christy. I'm the Crosshatch Quilter and I'm happy to be back here today talking to you about my stitching. Today is Tuesday, February 14th, 2023 and I believe this is floss tube number 26. Um, as you can see in my preview video, it is lots of snow and very much winter still here in my little corner of, <laughs> of the world. Um, so it's just been hibernating when I say that we just stay inside it's too cold to go anywhere um, I've been checking the weather in other parts of Utah and like Heber and Utah um, Sundance and like Salt Lake they all hover in the 20s and 30s during the day and we're sitting here at like five degrees <laughs> so it's just cold um, so all that snow that we have isn't going anywhere anytime soon so we just stay inside and do homeschool and stitch and sew and do what, make all the things. I hope that um, you're having a great winter as well. And today I have a few things to share with you today. I have some a couple finishes, um, some new starts of course, and whips and plans. And I've been sewing, so I have a few bags and um, some Happy Melon haul. So let's get started. So the last time that we visited, I had shown you that I had started Winter Rose Manor on December 25th as my Christmas day start. And I was working on this with so many of you. I've seen so many um, posts on Instagram and Facebook. And I was stitching this with Sherry Colorado's cross stitcher. And I just wanted to get this done. Like I started on December 25th and other than my main project, which is Elizabeth Furnace, um, every month. I just, this was my focus piece for January. And I really would just loved working on it, but I wanted to get it done so that I could hang it up before winter was over. And I finished it on January 24th. And I absolutely love it. I stitched it on um, 36 count dirty linen, which is unfortunately an out of print linen. You can no longer find it. Um, it was by Nordic Crafts. Nor Norden? I can't remember the name. <laughs> anyway, I stitched this with all the called for threads, um, except for the white. I used Grits by Weeks Dye Works. The um, pink house is the called for conch, and I absolutely love how everything shows up on this. Um, so Lori Holt um, stitched this a couple years ago when it first came out and she framed this, um, her Winter Rose Manor in this frame from Hobby Lobby. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was the perfect frame for this piece. It just, it just has all the right elements, the color. I loved the scalloped border. And so of course, as soon as she showed it, I immediately ordered it from Hobby Lobby and um, so then I just, when I got mine finished on January 24th, I laced it and popped it in there and I've been enjoying it ever since. So thanks Lori for letting me copy. I'm gonna show you what the frame looks like in case you wanna order it. They still have it available. And I ordered another one from Hobby Lobby just recently. And so they still have them available. And this is what it looks like when you get it. It has, it says, this is us on the inside. And I'm gonna get up really close so that you can get the, um, the SKU number off of the back if you wanna take a screenshot of that. And so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna use this for, but I mean, maybe I'll use it for the second piece that Brenda Gervais is gonna be coming out with. I think it's called The Light of Winter, something like that. Um, I'm hoping and cross my fingers that will get released this year. So <clears throat> that was my first finish. I'm so excited to have it done. And the lacing was my second, I think my second or third attempt at um, framing my own pieces. And I think I'm getting a little bit better each time I do it. <laughs> so that's good. So then my next finish, so I finished that on January 24th and then I had the 25th day stitch style that I still wanted to be um, working and participating in. And so I picked up Animal Crackers Whitaker by Stacy Nash. And I had started this in December with Lori. 
but I had just outlined Whitaker and then I had stopped and not worked on him again. So I finished him, not on the 25th, but I, I worked on him on the 25th and I just kept working on him a little bit each day. That is a lot of fill in. But, and then I stitched his little tree ornament down here. I'm, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna keep this on there. It's, it's cute and I will keep it. I might just put it on like an ornament on a little tiny tree or something. But I got up the courage and I finished him myself. <laughs> it was a little bit scary um, cutting him out, but I just followed the instructions on uh, that Stacy provides. And then I put a little wool scarf on in and then on the back, I have some Jewel Morton fabric and I did a little wool heart like the pattern calls for on the back there. So it can be a scissor holder, but I haven't stitched it down yet. I still need to do some finishing stitching along there, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out and he is just so cute. He reminds me of my dog Gus. I don't know why he's just so sweet and big. <laughs> So I definitely want to stitch more animal crackers. I have um, Paisley, which is the girl snowman. And then I definitely want to get some rabbits and they're just so much fun. I love the element that they add to a dough bowl with other winter finishes. So I'm really excited to have that done. And it was so much fun. And now that I'm done with those two finishes, I'm done with Christmas and or winter stitching. like no more snow, no more snowmen, no more Christmas winter stitching <laughs> for a while. I'm like over winter. So as you'll see in all of my new starts and my whips that it's all spring and flowers from here on out. <laughs> so let's bring on some spring. As I was finishing up Winter Rose Manor, I just kept like towards the end, it was a little bit of a rough you know, I was like, oh, I don't want to, I just want to set this down. I don't want to work on it anymore. But my like little carrot dangling at the end of the treadmill to keep me going was I wanted so badly to work on Mary Bars um, by Stacy Nash. And I told you that last time that I wanted to work on her in February. And that is exactly what I've been doing. So this is Mary Bars Sampler by Stacy Nash Primitives. And I started this a couple years ago and then I just set it down like I often do. I probably saw a squirrel, but um, I'm, I've am i been absolutely loving stitching on it this and I'm stitching it with all the called for um, Weeks Dye Works. They're in my little floss bags. bag, so I don't know how well you can see them, but they are just the prettiest colors. There's baked apple in there and they kind of remind me of Blackbird Designs uh, colors. They're just muted and beautiful. So I have this in my um, French general bag I made several years ago and it just matches the colors and the flowers. So here is my progress. So last time, so I'll show you here where I was before and then this is where I'm at now and sorry for the wrinkles. I actually went to go film the other day and had everything ironed and then um, it didn't happen. And then today I've been stitching on this and getting it wrinkly again. But I had messed up on the border. There's, the border is not symmetrical. Mary Bars, when she was stitching this, left out. She just did like on one of these little um, flower posts, she did two instead of one. And so I was short by like four stitches. So I worked on the border first and I, oh, it took me several days and I get all the way down to here and I'm like, oh, I hope it, you know, I don't know how much finagling I'm going to have to do to get it to match up because I knew that I had messed up on the border up here, but I had already started putting in some of this landscaping down here. So I was just going to fudge it. <laughs> well, I got down here and it was going to match up just perfectly like I was just going to have to like go over one stitch and it was going to work. So I got all the way to there and I was half a stitch off. So somewhere along the lines I had stitched either one post or three instead of two. So that was a fun night. <laughs> that was a fun night of trying to figure it out. Um, 
and where I had actually messed up was about right here. And there is, this is Weeks Dye Works parchment, um, 36 count, and it's the new Zweigart, but this one has a lot of slubs in it, like really big ones. And then of course, right next to it is like just this hair, hair thin um, strand. And on the place where I had messed up, there was a slub going this way, and then there was a slub going horizontal as well. And so it just made the linen thread just so, so thin. I, I literally could barely see it when I finally figured it out. Like I was like, is that, is that where I messed up? But like I had to keep looking at it for a minute. So <laughs> I unpicked just over to here, thank goodness, because if it would have been, oh, anyway, I was thankful that it was where it was at, but it was still a lot of work to unpick it. And so then last night I got the border to match up and now I'm just working on all the berries. And I've got all of the darker color berry done. And I'm just working on these light colored ones now, which is sand by Weeks. It's so pretty. It's like a pinky, a light pinky sandy color. So that's what I've mainly been working on. And then I did the alphabet up here. I still have to do this ghosty white alphabet. I'll take it all the way over. But what I've been focusing on the last um, little bit is I have been doing outlining. So I'd already had the tree outlined and some of the fence and I'm just finishing the fence and all of this um, grass so that I can do fill in as I am visiting with people and then um, I've been working on a tree. So I've been really excited to get to all the flowers and all of the fun stitching, but I wanted to get in like the bones of the project first just so that I could feel good about that. Yeah, it all meets up and it's all good now. But I absolutely oh, I just love this so much. I can't put it, I don't want to put it down. Like it is one of those stitches that I'm like, why did I ever put this down when I did? Because it is a, such a pleasure to work on. Some of those, some projects just are better than others. I don't know what it is. Like you love all of the charts that you obviously buy and kit up to work on, but this one is just a pleasure and I love working on it. So I'm hoping to get a finish on this one this year. But we will see. You never know with those squirrels. I'm going to set things on the floor because I have no room. Um, I'm in my kitchen today. I forgot to mention that. Um, I I got this pie safe from my dad from for Christmas. And I absolutely love it. And I know there's a little bit of a glare on the glass. But hopefully I'm blocking most of it. <laughs> but I just, I was enjoying the... Um, the sun coming in through the windows today, you know, the sun and light are like a valuable commodity right now <laughs> where I live. It's been such dark gray skies. We've had inversion with um, unhealthy air. And so it's just, we just get all the sunlight that we can. So I told you last time I showed you Alice Clark and I told her, you that I wanted to start this at some point this year, um, hoping for a September start for my birthday. <laughs> it is such a gorgeous chart. Um, I absolutely love it. It looks deceiving because it looks small in this picture. It is 491 wide by 486 high. So she's definitely not a small piece. Um, I'm stitching this on 46 count old sheet by Extra Design with the Averisua 103s. But after my last video, um, I was texting my friend Carol and Yvette and they're like, okay, we're ordering the chart. We're getting the linen and the thread and we'll go from there because we're going to definitely stitch this with you for your birthday. And then as we were all getting our supplies in, um, you know, we'd get linen in and then we'd show each other and then we'd get all the, one day I got all of my 103s and that was just like, after I got all of the ones that I needed in, I was like, I just want to start this. Like I can't, I, I know in my last video, I said I was only going to start one reproduction sampler this year. And so I'm not, I didn't lie. Right. <laughs> so anyway, we, um, we decided that we would just start it because life is short and you just have to just do all the things. So here's all of the called for, Averisois silks and I 
love this project. What I'm doing is I've been working on it a little bit um, every morning when I wake up when my eyes are fresh because this is 46 count linen. And it's just, if I, I just figure if I work on it and put in two strands a day, then I'll have some progress and it's definitely not gonna get done this year, but it doesn't matter. It's just a fun, fun project to work on. But here is where I'm at so far. And sorry for the wrinkles. This is another one I had ironed and then I pulled it out, worked on it since Saturday. But I absolutely, I've just, I enjoy working on it more than I thought I was going to, to be honest. I didn't know if I was gonna like the 46 count. Um, I've never stitched on 46 count and I, I don't very often stitch on 40 count. So I just, it was a brave order for me to get that linen. But I, I've really been enjoying it. Um, I can see it just fine with my 3.0 readers and it's just a fun stitch. I don't know if I'd want to stitch on it like all day, every day, like, like after a couple strands, I'm good and ready to move on to my next project. So it's the perfect, just two strands a day project for me. And I don't work on it every single day. Um, sometimes in the mornings I work on a small instead. So I've just been alternating as I feel like it. So it's a fun, just easy breezy project. So on the subject of working on a project in the morning time, I've been working on smalls in the morning or on a Saturday. And I really have been enjoying that. I, in the past, have not worked in smalls and I just always work on big projects and I want to get all those little smalls, all those little doble finishes. Um, and it's just a fun, satisfying finish to get you know, you can finish it yourself. You don't have to send it off to the framer. And so I really want to incorporate a lot more smalls into my stitching this year. So after I finished Whitaker, I picked up The Maker and The Mender, and that is by Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. And I loved this as soon as it came out and immediately bought it. Um, I am stitching this with the... Well, I changed all the called for reds. So this is 36 count buttercream or vintage buttercream by Lakeside Linens. And I'll just get in close my AC is stitching on that. So some of the colors were just a little bit muted um, for, I love them. I still think they're pretty, but just for my house decor, um, I just wanted it to be a little, a little bit darker and dirtier. Dark and dirty as Carol says. So um, there was like a terracotta and just a lot of little light colors, but I changed the red to the darkest red that um, it called for to Mulberry by Gentle Arts. And then my next color is Chili Pepper by Classic Color Works. And then the third one, um, I can't remember if it called for terracotta as the darkest and I did it as the lightest. I think it did, maybe. I can't remember, um, but there is the color palette and all the, all the rest of the threads are called for. But I just thought that they looked really good on that buttery, creamy yellow linen. My house has a lot of warm tones to it, so this will work great. So this is just another easygoing project. I don't have like, you know, a time frame on it of when I have to get done. I just like smalls. And this one seems to be going pretty fast. I think I've worked on it for two Saturdays. Um, and I haven't worked on it in, on any morning ship. And then my other um, small that I have been working on, I, <clears throat> so I am part of the Pine Mountain Designs um, monthly club. And it comes with comes with a little doble to set your finish in. And here, let me show you the chart first. So this is February's chart. This is the first one in the series and you can still sign up for this. This is through Pine Needles, which is a quilt shop. And then the owner, owner Sandra is also a designer and her Pine Mountain Designs is the name of her cross stitch designs. So it comes with everything in this picture. Come The first month comes with a little bowl and then it comes with a little needle roll and a small little square pillow and then it comes with the um everything to make 
so it comes with even like little wool balls and the cutout wool um, heart to make the um, the wool heart and then it comes with a little valentine so it's gonna all look super cute in that little doble um, I have started on February's little needle roll and I will get this finished up um, I got this a little bit later and then <clears throat> we had a couple snowstorms and I couldn't get out to get the DMC so I got a later start on this one but I plan on keeping up with them each month they're so cute and I just got in the mail um, this month's or next month's March look how cute that is and somebody in uh, crocheted little hearts. Um, nope, that's a lucky charm. <laughs> Four leaf clover. <laughs> oh, sometimes I say the wrong thing. So a little four leaf clover and then just another little postcard to set in there. So that looks so cute. Um, it has, again, each month a little needle roll and a little um, pillow. So, if, and I will link them below they have a YouTube channel as well, and they show you how to finish the needle roll um, so that you can finish it yourself. But I believe that they still have openings for this um, monthly club, and they're just a quick stitch. Um, I stitched this in just one morning and for 20 minutes. So it's definitely going to be a fast finish each month and something that um, I hope I can keep up with. So those are my smalls and I've just been loving them. Uh, like I said, I don't know why I haven't stitched them all along, <laughs> but so my next project that I have been working on is Elizabeth Furness from Hands Across the Sea. And I am stitching this with my good friends, Yvette and Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and Becky, who is Socks for Mom. And each month we get an assignment and we just work on it until we get our assignment done and then we can work on other projects. Becky sent the cutest thread bling this month. Um, so here's what I'm stitching them with. I'm stitching them with all of the called for Avera Soie, Soie d'Alger. Look at that beautiful rainbow, not gorgeous. These are a pleasure to stitch with. They are one of my favorite threads. And she sent this little thread bling, which is the house. I love it. I can hear cats meowing in our backyard. We don't have any cats, but um, we have like a bunch of neighborhood cats that congregate in my backyard and they have cat fights. It's hilarious because I've never, <laughs> I don't know, it just, it's funny. And then um, we have a big dog in our neighbor's backyard that because it has snowed and we have such deep snow right now, he can stand on top of the snow and he can put both paws on top of the fence. He's a big dog. He's um, a shaggy dog. They're just like on the movie, The Shaggy Dog. That's exactly what he looks like. But he can just stand there and put his paws on top of the fence and he sits and barks at my dogs when they're in my backyard. And so he barks the cats and it's funny. Um, he doesn't do it all day long or it wouldn't be very funny. Okay, so back to Elizabeth Furness. Um, I am stitching this on a 36 count baby sheep by X Jude Designs. And so last month, and I'll insert my progress here or my where I was last time. So this is where we were at last time. We needed to stitch the tree and Adam and Eve, <laughs> or as Olivia has lovingly named them Elvis and Loretta. And they totally look like Elvis and Loretta. I can't unsee it now. I have such fun stitching with these girls. It's We have fun chit-chatting. So that tree was a monster. And it wasn't that it was even hard stitching. It was fun, easy stitching. A lot of fill-in on the berries. And the vine on the tree wasn't a hard one. Like a lot of trees sometimes I'm like, ugh. But this one wasn't bad. But it was just a lot. But I got her done. And then this month, our homework assignment is we were needed to bring over the um, carnations and to stitch the cartouche, which I'm going to leave empty until the very end. That's the last thing I'm going to um, stitch is the name on the cartouche. 
And um, so we're going to be doing this over one. I will do that this month. And then we're, we need to bring over the lawn to, I think about right here, somewhere around there. Um, and I still have fill in to do. So I've got a lot of work down here to do this month and that over one stitching left. And it is just so, oh, I love it so much. I'm excited to get this one done this year. So that is Elizabeth Furnace. So I'm just gonna chuck them on the ground. The next project that I worked on, I work on this one on most Fridays, unless I'm, Fridays are a hard day because it seems like they're my least stitching time day. I've got, we're just wrapping up the week of homeschool and trying to, you know, get groceries done. And it just seems like it's always a busy day. And then it's date night a lot of times. So I don't get as much stitching time, but what I do have, I work on um, Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. And this is another thread bling from Becky for Socks for Mum. So cute. That is actually my favorite block in the whole entire um, chart. So I was excited to get that. So thank you, Becky. So you've seen it. I've shown it to you a million times because I'm... <laughs> I am, I swear that these projects are like a snail's pace. I don't, I don't know why, but they just go really slow for me, um, which is okay. It's, it's not a race, right? So I worked on this block this month and I'll insert a picture here of where I was last time, but I got the, um, the pig filled in. And all of these words, I didn't have the green around them filled in. And then I started working on all the apples and these baskets down here. So all I have left is I need to do apples and one basket. And I'll have this block done. But that's still, I mean, I'll probably get that done um, before I see you next. But a lot of stitching. They, they go slow, these blocks. And then... Um, I'll probably, after I get that block done, I'll probably come back up here and I'll finish this block. This is like a little um, pumpkin patch down there. So super fun. Um, I'm working on this with, on stitching this on 36 count straw linen by Weeks Dye Works with the thread conversion from um, Shepherd's Bush. And I absolutely, I love it how it looks. I just need to... I'm, when we get closer to fall and I just want to stitch on fall, I'll probably pick this project up and give it a lot of love. Um, usually like late summer, I really start to get in the mood to stitch a lot of fall. And I want to work on a lot of fall smalls this year. And then my last project that I have been working on, this is Heartstring Samplery. His Eyes on the Sparrow, and I love everything about this project. The colors are just so yummy. They're my favorite color palette. All the worms, um, just so pretty. I was stitching on this the Sunday that they did the playoff game um, where the Chiefs won the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. And I knew that um, my friend Christine Hollis was at the game, so I was thinking of her the whole entire time I was stitching on this and smiling and so I was so happy and I'm happy that the Chiefs won as well. So I'm stitching this on uh, 36 count. I forget the name every single time. I want to say it's Heritage, but I know that's not correct. Maybe it'll come to me in a second. <laughs> but I'm stitching it with all of the called for threads. And I'll insert a picture here of where I was last time. So I mainly worked on the house and I filled in the house with the mulberry color. It is not the called for. Um, I'd seen several people stitch it with the mulberry and I, I liked that change. So that's what I went with. And then I stitched the cartouche. I think a couple of the tulips in the border, this flower and the horse and a couple of these little guys. But I really, really love this project. Um, it's a big one. It's not, I don't think it's going to get done in the year 2023, but I'm just going to keep working on it. And it's once the big projects or the big 
stuff is done in it. Like once I get the Adam and Eve tree down here done, I think that it'll be fun to just, you know, do the small fill-ins. You can usually get like three motifs done on a Sunday evening. So it'll just be a slow rolling project. You guys hopefully won't get sick of seeing it all the time because <laughs> I plan on just keeping it in my rotation this year. So that is all that I worked on. I have been just enjoying my stitching and hibernating. Um, I wanted to share with you some of my haul that I have been purchasing this month. Um, I ordered the Cedar River Linen, which is Trixie Tricycle's um, business. And her linen is absolutely yummy with this wonderful little cedar drawer. I'm going to put it in my linen drawer so it'll make everything smell divine. But this colorway that I got was um, Overcast. And then I have also ordered the green colorway and it's um, it should be on its way soon. I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but it's very pretty and I am looking forward to finding a project to put on that. And then I am part of the um, Threads of History Club through Country Sampler and I got um, I love this. It's Bertha Mae Brown, and I think that is so sweet. That will be a fun um, project to work on for Valentine's Day. And this one is all Brenda and Lara's fault. They get me in a lot of trouble, um, often. <laughs> and this is Florence, Florence Mary Dickinson by Hands Across the Sea. This is an exclusive through Hobby House Needle um, Needleworks. And last time I checked, they had a few left. So if you want this, um, you need to order it uh, through Hobby House. And Brenda's progress on this is absolutely beautiful. It is it is absolutely gorgeous. So I look forward to starting that, but not this year. I'm, I'm not gonna start any more samplers, reproduction samplers this year. I'm of course gonna start other things. <laughs> Lucy Barber by 1850, Lucy Barber 1857 by Hands Across the Sea. Love, love, love this sampler. I ordered this the second that I saw it. This is an exclusive through, I'm just waiting for it to come to me, traditional stitches through in Canada. And I absolutely love this chart. Again, I can't wait to, I can't wait to stitch it one day. And then I got my um, Martha Evans 1879 by the Scarlet House. I got this in and this is the stitch for Brenda's Big Birthday Sal. And I right now I have it kitted with um, a piece of vintage maple sugar by Lakeside Linens, but I might switch it out when I can get my hands on the call for linen through needle and flax. So there is my haul. And then I have a little bit of Happy Mill. Oh, some awesome Happy Mill. So um, a couple weeks ago, Carolee, who is one of my really good friends, I talk to her often and we've been chatting for a few years. Um, she has a floss tube channel called Stitching is Elementary. And she's one of my very favorite floss tubers. As soon as her floss tubes get um, released, I watch them that very day. And she also does quilt videos. So she's a stitcher and a quilter. But she told me she wanted to send me a welcome home gift. And I was like, what? She sent me the cutest card. Isn't that the most adorable card? And she stitched me a pillow. Oh my heck. I love it so much. And I'm, I know exactly where I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this in my dough bowl, in my kit, not, not my dough bowl, my tiered tray that's on my kitchen countertop. And I love the gingham that she stitched it on. Um, it is, I think it's a, like a combination of charts that she kind of just put together. And she even did some over one stitching, I believe, for me. Thank you so much, Carolee. I love it so much. I can't even... Oh, the back, so cute with the little scissors. I will treasure this always. And like I've said in the past, when you stitch for a stitcher, they know how much time and love went into that. So I'm just super appreciative of it. Thank you so much, Carolee. That just made my whole week. 
And then um, I got some haul from uh, Fat Quarter Shop. They sent a Prim Village keychain. I I love these keychains. I put them on all my bags. And then a cute um, Lori Holt needle minder. And this is the Pink B. So cute. This one is from Lori Holt as well. I didn't mention, I forgot to say that. And then this is um, Lori's new thread bling. Love thread bling. So I'm excited to put, to kit up a project and put it on there and you can use her little thread drops with it. <laughs> oh, the next month of the Chicken Club, Cornelius is her name. Isn't that adorable? That is um, through the Fat Quarter Shop and that's Lori Holt's um, club that one, one gets released each month. They're so cute. And um, then Fat Quarter Shop released these cute little ornaments for um, winter or Christmas and now they've done a Valentine. Oh, I think those are so super cute. Now that I'm on the Smalls bandwagon, I'd really like to get some of these done. I'd really, it would be so fun to have just a seasonal tree. And I used to have one and I just never decorated it. So I need to get back on doing that. Be Mine, and this is a chart from It's So Emma. Super cute. And Lady Claus by It's So Emma. And they have a Mr. Claus and like a um, Red no Rudolph Red Nose Reindeer and a Snowman Frosty to match. And then um, January Stackable. This is super cute. That would be really cute in a winter display. So that is all my Happy Mail. I have been sewing and a couple of the things that I bag wise have been working on is um, I had purchased a couple bag panels when Lori released these um, crochet bags. And like I said, they're from Lori Holt of Being My Bonnet. And I have been working on granny squares. So of course I had to um, buy her bag panel and make the bag. And then it ha she has these cute yarn skeins, uh, zipper chains that you can get. But they're it's got tons of room. It's a huge bag. I don't even know how many, I, are they called skeins of yarn? But I am working on a project that has the Great Granny Squares with all of Lori's chunky thread. And I'm doing all of her fall colors, which there's a lot in there. And then also it comes with a little bag panel for the, the small zipper where you can hold all of your your hooks. I've got my hook in there and some of the accessories that you need for crocheting. So I'm that is so, super fun and very easy. She has a video on her YouTube channel of how to make this. So if you buy the bag panel, it's it's easy to follow along. I quilted mine, but you didn't you wouldn't have to if you didn't want to quilt it. And then I made a gingham bag. I have been wanting to make these for a really long time. I had it, I had some of the panels all sewn together when I was working on the red sampler quilt along that is was hosted by Lori um, using some of her books. And I think I've got like five blocks left um, and my quilt is complete. But as I was unpacking and reorganizing my sewing room the other day, I found the bag panels and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm, so I whipped those up. And um, I'll be offering more of those um, on my Instagram, but I'll get back to that. Kind of, I will get back to that in a second. So her gingham panel or her gingham pattern is in this Vintage Farm Girl 2 book. And you can do it in all sorts of different sizes. So you could make a king size quilt with the the pattern in different just size blocks. So I get a lot of questions on if I make project bags. Every video I get a question on that. And I try not to like advertise 
and try to sell things on my YouTube channel here. So that's why I haven't, I don't talk about it very often, but I do make um, quilted project bags and I sell them on my Instagram account. And that is crosshatchquilts underscore dstash. And there is a link to it on my main Instagram page as well, if you can't, if you're having a hard time finding it. But I don't take orders for bags. I just will post bags as they're available. Um, I should have some of these available in the next couple weeks and I'll um, post them on there. So I hope that you're having a great winter. I hope that spring emerges is surely to follow, right? Like <laughs> it's been a long winter and I hope that we're just have a great spring. We've gotten a ton of water, a lot of snow, which was great because we needed it. We were in a big drought. So that is very good news. And I just enjoyed spending time with you here today. And until next time, happy stitching.